Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Monday, April 7th, 2014. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. We're going to start off with the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And what you're going to see here is that the futures are trading lower by about five and a quarter points. They were down a little bit more, but nothing uh, dramatic today. Uh, after Friday's big, big sell-off, the markets are trying to hold steady. The most important chart that I think any trader can look at today is once again going to be the dollar-yen. Keep this on the radar, dollar-yen. Um, put in a little bit of a low just below the 103 level and has really held steady since. If the dollar-yen starts to sell off, expect the major stock indexes around the world to also sell off. So that's kind of the way it works. We'll watch that carry trade, and uh, that's the most important chart that anybody could follow at this time. Right now, the dollar-yen, for the most part, is just down about $0.09 cents on the session, um, but it was down overnight around 1 o'clock in the morning, a little bit more, and uh, we'll see how it all plays out. But again, this is going to be the most important chart. It is a Monday. Things are a little bit slower, but the big news coming out of the market today is QCOR is being bought out um, for, I believe, $5.6 billion, so... This is a great move up on QCOR. Stock closed on Friday at 67.87. It's now trading around 88.50. If you own it, congratulations. Try your stop loss or take your profits. Pick whichever one you want. But it looks like um, NNK, which is uh, Mallinckrodt, they are the buyers of uh, QCOR. And they are paying $5.6 billion in stock and in cash. This stock is actually trading higher as well, but... Again, the acquirer usually um, will go down in price, so be a little bit careful. You can see it had an initial pop to 70, now trading at 67. That may pull back a little bit, so if you own MNK, you know, just be prepared for the volatility uh, as they did buy uh, QCOR today. And um, again, if you own QCOR, you're happily surprised, and uh, congratulations. Let's go to Pfizer today. Pfizer's in the news. I forget exactly what the news is. You can check it out for yourself, but all I care about is the levels. There's a little bit of support here at 31 and a quarter, but the big level today you want to watch for Pfizer. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it gets there, but if it does, will be um, $29.25. That will be a buy level for Pfizer today. So if it gets down there to that area, you can pick up Pfizer on the long side. I think you'll get a nice little bounce there, at least for a scalp trade. That means a scalp trade is nothing longer than 10 to 30 minutes. You're looking to take a little bite out of the market intraday. And again, you can scalp Pfizer at 29.25 if it get, does get down to that level. But that should be a pretty good area for the stock. Once again, I'm not 100% sure what the news was coming out of uh, Pfizer today. But I, I think they had some uh, trial results involving a breast cancer drug. But you could look it up and see what it is. But either way, uh, unless the stock gets to 29.25, there's really not a lot you could do with it. Right now, it's um, trading at 31 and a quarter, which is a little bit of minor support here as well. But 29.25, stock should have a ton of support in that area. Let's take a look at Procter and Gamble today. Uh, it looks like they've upped their dividend, so um, perhaps the stock will move up a little bit. I have a really good resistance level on Procter and Gamble today at 81.10. 81.15 right in that vicinity so if the stock does get up to that level um, still got a little bit higher to go but around 81.10 81.15 that's where Proctor should hit pretty good resistance today if it does get up to that to that level so keep that on on the radar now Sears holding is down but um, this is a dividend payment so again Sears holding is down but they are spinning off their lands and unit so lands and I believe will be trading today on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol LE. So um, watch that one. Uh, but Sears right now, even though it looks like it's down, it's, it's actually spinning off Land's End. So you don't want to make much out of that one. Uh, again, I'm not sure the price that Land's End will be trading at, but it, it's a spin off and uh, the stock will be trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol LE, Larry Edward Land's End. Okay, so um, that's what you want to watch for there. Um, I do see another stock here, uh, Agios Pharmaceuticals, trading sharply higher this morning. I don't know the news on this one. I think it's some positive uh, drug news again. So this one is um, catching a pretty good bid. The stock closed at 35.48. It's trading at 46. I would not get in front of it. I don't know the news here. I know it's a positive drug result. So again, these things can overshoot, go higher than than, than you normally think. But Watch the bios today. There are going to be a lot of um, 
activity, I think, in the biotech sector. Another spot to watch for would be the genetic drug makers today as well. I believe Sun Pharmaceuticals um, is going to buy out Rambaxi for uh, $3.2 billion. So stocks like Mylan um, could be in the news today. You know, keep that on the radar. Again, a level I have for Mylan on a downside for support would be $47. So if Mylan got down to 47 I think you can scalp it there. That would be a good area for a bounce. I'm not sure we're going to see it. But if it does get there, that would be a good area for a bounce. So keep that on the radar today if it does get down there. Um, I'm not really 100% sure what we're going to see in this market with Friday sell-off. Friday sell-off was pretty sharp. Uh, we'll see if we do get more downside. But either way, there should be some stocks out here on a Monday morning uh, to trade decently. Let's go over to the oil market today. Oil light sweet crude is trading down $0.66 cents to $100.49 a barrel. So that's a pretty good uh, little downdraft there in the oil market. Let's go over to the USO, which is a good way to trade uh, light sweet crude. And what you'll see here is that the USO is trading at $36.22 right now, close at $36.43. I have good support around the 35 level if it does get down there. Other than that, there's not much I would do in the way of the oil market. You do got a lot going on uh, geopolitically, especially in the Ukraine and in Russia. So we'll see if that turns out to be anything meaningful or moves the markets, but it can, and it can also move the energy markets as well. But right now, I don't see any real support here until around uh, 34.95, uh, possibly even 34.60 for the USO. The gold market today is down about four dollars, so uh, gold futures trading lower by four dollars to twelve hundred ninety-nine dollars and forty cents an ounce. Let's go over to the GLD, which is a good proxy for trading. Uh, gold and what you'll see here it's trading at 125.12 uh, it closed at 125.57 so you got a little bit of a downdraft and again uh, if the dollar yen chart and I know this may not sound normal but if the dollar yen chart starts to move lower expect gold to get a bid if the dollar yen moves higher gold will probably sell off a little bit so uh, be prepared for that that's what you want to watch for that's the relationship that I'm seeing um, and it's working pretty well for quite a while now. So until it breaks apart, we want to continue to watch that. Looking at the futures again, they are down about five points at the moment, but they are off the worst levels of the morning. We'll see uh, where they do trade uh, once the opening bell rings a little bit later today. I'm going to leave it here today, short and sweet. There's not all that much out there um, before the opening bell. But again, big Friday downdraft. We'll see how the market handles it around the opening bell. With that said, everybody have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts.